Good morning. Welcome to St. George's Anglican Church in London, Ontario on this Trinity Sunday. We're glad that you have joined us for worship of morning prayer this morning. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, come, let us worship. A reading from Isaiah. 6 verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. 
Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. God of mystery and power, open our eyes to the flame of your love and open our ears to the thunder of your justice that we may receive your gifts of blessing and peace to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from John 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dough, sauce, cheese, toppings. When I say these four words, nine out of ten of us are thinking pizza. We've all had pizza before and we all know the ingredients to pizza. Everybody knows what pizza is, but the amazing thing is Barely 60 years ago in North America, only 10% of the population knew what pizza was. And of those 10%, most of them were immigrants from Italy, and the pizza that would become famous in North America was nothing like they have ever had. Pizza, you think of that iconic food in our culture, 60 years ago, the average person did not even know what a pizza was. But now when I say those four words, we're all thinking pizza. Dough, sauce, cheese, 
and toppings. And we're all thinking pizza because we've all had pizza before. We've all experienced pizza. So, 60 years ago, how did pizza come about? Well, the first real North America pizza establishment was Pizza Hut, and it was started in 1958 in Wichita, Kansas, by two brothers who themselves had never had pizza before. They just had a recipe and a picture of what pizza was supposed to look like. And if you've ever had Pizza Hut pizza, you will notice it's a bit different than all other pizzas, and it looks that way because those brothers didn't know what pizza was supposed to look like either. But yet, they took that recipe and that picture they had, and they made pizza, and they opened the first Pizza Hut. And at first, business was slow going because they would try to explain to people what it was, but they just didn't get it. They didn't get what it was. They thought, maybe it's some sort of sandwich, or maybe it's some sort of pie, dough, sauce, cheese, toppings. They just didn't get it. But then they noticed, as more people came to the restaurant, it was starting to catch on. They noticed that people had to experience eating pizza to understand what it was. They had to see a pizza, they had to smell a pizza, they had to taste a pizza, they had to touch a pizza. They had to experience a pizza to know what it was. And so now we're at the point in 2021 when I say those simple four words, we're all thinking pizza. Now today is Trinity Sunday. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what does pizza have to do with Trinity Sunday? And a lot of sermons on Trinity Sunday often deal with food. For preachers hate Trinity Sunday. Most preachers do whatever they can to get out of preaching on Trinity Sunday. They do everything they can to get their associate priest to preach. They do whatever they can because they don't want to explain to people the Trinity. And they often talk about food. Don't worry, I'm not going to say the Trinity is like a pizza. But they often say the Trinity is like an egg. Or the Trinity is like an Oreo. Or the Trinity is like water, fire, or water, steam, and ice. They go on and on and on, and in doing so, they commit some ancient heresy of the church by explaining the Trinity wrong. The other thing that they do is they try to explain who God is by some sort of laundry list. They talk about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they try to explain that. They try to explain that to people, and yet it just doesn't connect. But Trinity Sunday is not just about the doctrine of God. Trinity Sunday is about worshipping and extolling and praising the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who we all have experienced in this world. God reveals himself to us that way in Scripture, and we know it is true because we have experienced him in our lives and in the church and in our world. On Trinity Sunday, we don't necessarily need to have some serious doctrinal conversation but we need to point people to the living God, the triune God who is alive and well. We need to point people to experience that God. And then they will understand the Trinity. They will understand who he is. Just as people, the first people to have pizza, had to experience eating pizza to understand what pizza is. And this may sound far-fetched, but look at our gospel reading for today. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. And Nicodemus is trying to have some doctrinal theological conversation with Jesus. And he's just not getting it. He's not understanding what Jesus is talking about. Because you see, Jesus is not trying to give him a list of who God is. Jesus is saying, I'm here in front of you. And this passage of scripture is very interesting because it's one of the only passages where Jesus talks about the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He talks about God in those terms and in that way. So he reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we know this God to be true. We know that this is the living God who speaks to us from the beginning of Scripture to the end and is still alive and active in the world today. But Nicodemus doesn't get it because Nicodemus is trying to have a doctrinal conversation. And so he doesn't understand. He doesn't see that God is standing right there in front of him. And he chooses not to experience God in that moment, Jesus Christ extending his grace and his compassion and his teaching and his mercy. Because Nicodemus is thinking about something else. And so this passage of scripture that we have for today is important, firstly, because as I say, Jesus talks about God in the triune terms, one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's also important today because it shows us that it's okay not to understand this necessarily. It's okay not to understand this holy mystery fully. Nicodemus doesn't fully understand it. 
And yet two more times in the Gospel of John, he comes back to Jesus because he's compelled by the man and his teaching. And he becomes his follower, slowly but surely. And he comes to the point of helping Joseph of Arimathea bury the body of Jesus because he knows that he's more than just a mere man. He doesn't fully understand the mystery or the kingdom that Jesus is talking about, but he's approaching that light of faith. And so wherever we are on our faith journey, we don't always have to understand these mysteries fully. We never will understand these mysteries fully. And yet Jesus is there, and we become his followers. And the third reason why this passage of Scripture is important is because we know the Trinity exists. We know God is a triune God because he's the living God that redeems the world. And we have that famous passage of Scripture that shows us this, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. We do worship a God who is triune. One God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God created the world. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to redeem it. And now we are here behind with the Holy Spirit, who is still alive and active in the church and in the lives of men and women all over this world. That is the God whom we worship. That is the God whom we experience when we pray, when we worship, when we sing, when we are in community with one another, when we are out in the world. That is the God whom we experience, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we know that the revelation of Scripture is true. This is a holy mystery. St. Augustine himself, who would go on to write a big tome about the Trinity, says, well, you might as well not even bother trying to understand. But then he took on the challenge and wrote his famous book about the triune God. And so it is a holy mystery, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we experience that as the church, as the people of God. God is alive and active in our world. And so we must point to that triune God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when somebody comes and asks you, who is this God whom you worship? Don't give them a doctrinal list. Don't give them some image like an egg or a donut. Maybe talk about the pizza. Because talk about your experience with the triune God. Your experience with the God who created you, who redeemed you, and who sustains you in this world now. God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God whom we worship, the God who is alive and well and active in our world. That is who we testify about, and that is who we praise on this Trinity Sunday, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God who created, God who redeemed, and God who sustains. And so this day that we worship the Trinity, that we worship our one God in three persons. Let us end this sermon with those famous words which we say in our Anglican liturgy so very often. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Unseen member of the dance that unites the Trinity, let the grace your presence grants twine us in like mystery. Breath of God, our lives inspire till our hope and faith increase. Speak through us with tongues of fire. Send us forth to spread God's peace. Holy Spirit, show us the way to preserve, restore, and protect our earth, our oceans, and our air from the threats of pollution, destruction, and the misuse of our natural resources. Show us how to be good stewards of our environment by recognizing the need to conserve so that all can enjoy the beauty of nature now and in the future for our children's children. Come Holy Spirit, Creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, renew and refresh the faith of those who lead our church. We pray for Primate Linda, Bishop Todd, Metropolitan Anne, and our own ministry team, Fathers Aidan and Dale, that they will feel the breath of your glorious love anew. Provide this congregation of St. George's the faith to continue to experience your life-giving spirit in our own way and give witness to those still searching for faith, especially as we are still struggling with this global pandemic. Come Holy Spirit, Counselor, and touch our lips that we may proclaim your word. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, warm and enlighten our hearts with your redemptive love so that we can turn away from the darkness of hate, bias, and prejudice. Allow us to be instruments of this love and compassion to encourage others to also turn away from the darkness and seek the glory of your light and grace. Come, Holy Spirit, power from on high, Make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, remind us to take time for the renewal of our own bodies and spirit. Give us the foresight to tune out distractions and the stresses of this present chaotic world to be able to focus on what is truly important in our lives. Allow us to rejuvenate and recharge so that we can continue to serve you with open minds and hearts by giving freely in your name. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, Anoint us with your power to renew our commitment to St. George's Church, our neighborhoods, and the community we support. Give us the means and the volunteers to keep our sharing cupboards stocked and our community meals viable so that we can share with those in our neighborhood who are hungry and struggling, even more so due to the pandemic. We pray that we can continue to be that welcoming beacon of light and friendly non-judgmental gathering place for anyone who comes to our door, even now, and more so when we can freely meet. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth, strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Blow, breath of God, blow on us. Blow away the darkness and distractions that hold us back from trusting, risking, loving, 
blow away our biases that stand in the way of interacting and sharing with our neighbors, ready us for rebirth, prepare us for risks, equip us with the courage and vision for the new thing that awaits around the corner. We cannot choose the stories that we have inherited, but we can choose the stories that we become. Amen. The Collect for this Trinity Sunday. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.